as we uh, prepare our hearts in sorrow for Good Friday, but then for the surprise of joy on Easter morning. Good evening and welcome to Monday, Thursday worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Love one another as I have loved you. This is the first mandate Jesus hands down to us from that Thursday to today. As often as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. This is the second mandate Jesus hands down to us from that Thursday. Sacrifice 
is a word that we do not hear as much these days. We don't kill animals to try to make things right with God, the form of sacrifice that we read a lot of in the Hebrew Bible. We don't even talk as much about Jesus dying as a sacrifice for our sins. More about that in a minute. I don't even think we use the word as much to describe the compromises or the concessions that we make in relationship to others. We don't often use that word sacrifice in that context. And even if we do such things, I believe that we probably do them a little bit less than we used to. It's uh, opening day for baseball, and uh, my Cubs lost. But uh, even in Major League Baseball, the sacrifice has become less common, especially the sacrifice bunt. See, statisticians claim that it is more productive to swing for the fences than to advance a runner with a bunt. And I think that some baseball players are more than happy not to bunt, because if you've ever attempted to lay down a bunt, you know that you have to turn your head directly towards the pitcher. It's like putting a big bullseye on your face. Those professional pitchers are throwing 95 plus miles an hour from just 60 feet 6 inches away, and even closer once they launch forward from the rubber to release the ball. Bunting is literally sticking your neck out, making yourself even more vulnerable to some dangerous heat coming your way. Jesus, in the readings we will hear shortly, knows about sacrifices. He has been teaching in the temple, where the sacrificial system still operated, where people brought animals to sacrifice to God to wipe away their sin. Jesus, his disciples, and many other Jewish people were in Jerusalem for the Passover festival, when they were called the spirit of death in Egypt, passing over the homes of Jews who had sacrificed a lamb and smeared its blood on the doorframe. The lamb was sacrificed to save the people. Jesus knows about sacrifices, and then he himself becomes one. There's ongoing debate over whether Jesus is an atoning sacrifice for humankind, whether God was angry with humans and took it out on Jesus, who willingly sacrificed his life so that God would take God's anger out on us. I like to think that Jesus dies not to absorb God's anger for humankind that we deserve, but to take on human anger toward God that he doesn't deserve. Jesus stays true to his message of love even when the human leaders dare him to strike back or to wiggle out of the situation. Regardless of how we look at it, it's very difficult to see what Jesus does as anything other than sacrifice, as anything other than him turning his face directly into the high heat that hunts his head. In baseball, we call that taking one for the team. In Jesus' case, we call it dying on the cross for us. Still a mystery what exactly that sacrifice does. But like I say on Palm, like I said on Palm Sunday, it's a mere image of the script that we are used to hearing about our own human suffering, about us crying out to God and being concerned that we won't hear anything in response. In this story, it is God's Son dying both with God's silence and God's own crying out with Jesus' voice. God and us bonded by pain and alienation. Whatever the reason that Jesus does what he does, the one thing that I know is that Jesus does it in love. And that's the thing, the transformative thing about sacrifices, is that it's one thing when we make a sacrifice with resentment in our heart, but it is a whole other thing when we make a sacrifice with love in our hearts. When we do so, when we enact our sacrifices with pure love, it can be one of the most precious gifts that we can ever give in this life. And so now let us recall those events of that Thursday night into Friday 
and wonder at the mystery of God's loving sacrifice. Amen. Forgiveness of 
sins. As often as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. Ministering to you now in Christ's name, we share these elements. God for opening this table and your grace to all who are willing to become vulnerable to you and to each other. We thank you that in your infinite love all are welcome at your table. We thank you for the wholeness of the bread and the cup, the wholeness of your sacrifice that the sacrament proceeds and symbolizes, and the love that it shares with us so many years later. Be with us as we witness again the betrayal, the desertion, the denial of your disciples, as we witness again the trial and the pain and the suffering, strengthen us in times of trial. Remind us that you wait with those who have died until that day when again you will taste the cup of salvation with them and all of us in the name of Jesus our Lord, our Savior, our friend, and our hope. Amen. Jesus said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me. And then they have kept your word. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for men for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, 
Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down.
for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, he stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of people, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place which is called the skull, they crucified Jesus and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. It is finished. Takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. <laughs> 